Hello viewers, in this session uh, we will discuss yet another version of uh, Cauchy's theorem like we uh, said last time. So, uh, so far we have Cauchy's theorem uh, on a rectangle and then Cauchy's theorem uh, for a disc. So, today we are going to see that if we have uh, two simple closed curves uh, one inside other ok, I will make those terms more concrete. Uh, so, if one is inside the other and both are oriented uh, in the positive sense, then, um, then the integration of f uh, of an analytic function f uh, on one of them is equal to uh, the integration over the other. Okay. So, I will make the statement uh, more precise. Uh, so, here is Cauchy's theorem version 3. From here on in this course, the curves that we are going to consider are always going to be contours unless mentioned otherwise. So, please take a note of this. So, in order to uh, make some preparation for stating this theorem, uh, let us uh, start with some recollection of properties of a simple closed curve. Okay. So, uh, we will call uh, the trace okay, of a simple closed curve uh, as a simple closed curve. Okay. So, what that means is I will constantly uh, keep confusing the curve with its uh, trace when there is no uh, much ambiguity. Okay. Uh, and uh, having said this, uh, so a, a, the first fact we will need is uh, or the property of a simple closed curve that we will need is that a simple closed curve uh, separates okay, or it is trace okay, uh, in the complex plane. Okay, uh, separates the plane. Uh, separates the plane into two components okay two uh, components okay uh, ie uh, the complement of uh, a simple closed curve okay i'll say scc for short okay a simple closed curve uh, in the complex plane Okay, uh, is the disjoint union of uh, two open connected sets. Okay, or components. So, open connected sets are also called uh, maximal open connected sets are also called components. Since they are disjoint, okay, uh, these are called uh, components okay. and this statement is called uh, is called the Jordan curve theorem. Okay. So, uh, for simple minded curves, uh, this is uh, reasonably uh, easy to believe. So, for example, if you consider a circle in the complex plane, uh, then it is clear uh, to see that the complement of uh, the circle um, you know is the disc inside the circle and the uh, and the region outside the circle okay but in general uh, for a simple closed curve um, the statement needs a proof and um, we we are going to assume that uh, this statement is true for uh, a general simple closed curve so uh, a simple minded example is like that that's a simple closed curve or a trace of it okay so with some direction let us say okay. then uh, the complement of this curve is that portion okay, and then outside of that portion. Okay. So, uh, this is region 1, region 2. So, 1 union 2 the disjoint union of this is the complement. So, if I call this gamma is C minus gamma. Okay. In this case okay, where uh, the curve, simple closed curve separates uh, the complex plane into uh, two components. Okay, the curve is the boundary. What is also important is that the curve is uh, 
uh, the boundary okay, uh, of either component. One of uh, these components is bounded. Okay, since the curve itself is bounded, one of the components it is intuitively easy to believe is bounded okay, and uh, the other is unbounded. Okay, and this uh, this much we will uh, take it on belief. Okay, uh, and we call the bounded component as the inside of the simple closed curve. Okay, let's name the curve. Let's call it gamma. Okay, and denote it by i of gamma. Okay. So, i of gamma is a, a region uh, in the complex plane, it is an open connected set, uh, you know, which is the bounded component corresponding to the simple closed curve uh, gamma. Okay. And uh, notice that i of gamma is defined only for a simple closed curve and not for a, a general curve. We call um, the unbounded uh, component as the outside of gamma okay, of the simple closed curve okay, gamma okay, and uh, denoted by O of gamma. So, uh, now we want to uh, talk about orientation of a simple closed curve. Okay. So, uh, the simple closed curve gamma okay, uh, is positively oriented okay. So, we are trying to define positively oriented okay. if the points of i of gamma okay, appear to the left when traveling along the trace of gamma okay, in the direction of Uh, the increasing parameter of gamma. Okay. So, uh, recall that we said we gave a direction to gamma based on the uh, increasing parameter value. So, if the direction of gamma is such that when one travels in the direction of gamma, uh, the points on the inside for a simple closed curve uh, fall on its left then we say that the uh, curve simple closed curve gamma is positively oriented. Okay. So, for example, um, if you consider a circle okay, uh, unit circle okay, um, and then you consider the function cos t plus i sin t from 0 to pi for example, to uh, c gamma of t is cos t plus i sin t. 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi, then uh, you start here and the trace in the complex plane, okay, uh, it goes in the counterclockwise direction to the observer from the top of the plane okay, and then this region uh, the unit disc uh, d equals set of all z such that the modulus of z is strictly less than 1, uh, it becomes your inside of this gamma. Okay, gamma is a simple closed curve and d is the inside okay. and uh, the set s is the set of all z such that the modulus of z is strictly greater than 1 okay. that is everything which is outside okay, becomes the outside of this curve. Okay. So, um, and then we call this curve um, positively oriented. 
Okay. So, notice that if gamma is positively oriented, then uh, we defined a curve minus gamma, which traces gamma in the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, that is not positively oriented, we want to call that negatively oriented. Okay. We call gamma as negatively oriented Okay, of course, uh, this has to be a simple closed curve. Okay, uh, if uh, minus gamma is positively oriented. Okay, so uh, that's positive and negative orientation for a simple closed curve. Okay, so with these, uh, with this terminology, we are ready to. Uh, state the third version of uh, Cauchy's theorem. Okay, so, here is Cauchy's theorem. Okay, this version uh, can also be called uh, a deformation theorem. Okay, so, uh, this, is, this can also be called as deformation theorem. A very uh, simple version of what is usually called a deformation theorem. Okay, so, um, let gamma 1 and gamma 2 be two simple closed, okay, two positively oriented. I need this to be positively oriented, simple closed curves. Okay. And um, I will also add piecewise smooth, since we are dealing with piecewise smooth curves only, okay, piecewise smooth simple closed curves. and let uh, gamma 2 uh, be contained in the inside of gamma 1. Okay. Uh, also, uh, let A denote the set, uh, the trace of gamma 1 union, the inside of gamma 1 intersection the outside of gamma 2 okay, union gamma 2 star, okay, union the trace of gamma 2. Okay. Let f be a function, a complex function of course, okay, which is analytic on an open set. Okay, uh, let us call it open set omega uh, containing A, containing this set A. Okay. Then the conclusion is that the contour integral on gamma 1 of f of z dz okay, is equal to the contour integral on gamma 2 f of z dz. So, um, so here is the schematic uh, for this version of Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, suppose you have some curve gamma 1, simple closed curve rather, gamma 1 oriented in the positive sense okay. and then there is yet another curve gamma 2 not intersecting gamma 1 uh, and also uh, gamma 2 is completely contained inside uh, gamma 1 okay. and here is gamma 2, both of them are oriented in the positive uh, sense. Okay. So, A, this A which appears in the statement of the theorem okay, is uh, essentially your uh, region in between, uh, so to say according to the uh, schematic. Okay, U and and it includes A includes uh, the trace of gamma one and gamma two. Okay, uh, union region in between. Okay, in bit the region in between is clearly the intersection of the inside of gamma one and the outside of gamma two. Okay, so uh, that's your set A. Okay. So, what is important is uh, independent of the schematic. Okay. So, A is compact. 
it is a compact uh, subset of the complex plane ok and that is uh, very significant ok and uh, so here is uh, the proof ok there are some details that I will skip, but uh, more or less uh, this is the proof. So, I will assume that gamma 1 and gamma 2 are smooth ok smooth simple closed pairs. Okay. The, the proof for uh, piecewise smooth uh, simple closed curves can be given uh, similarly uh, with some slight modification of the proof uh, that I am going to give. Okay. So, uh, first what we will use is the fact that A is a compact set. Okay. So, I have written it above A is a compact subset of C. So, um, so, by the epsilon neighborhood theorem, okay, uh, there exists an epsilon positive. Okay. So, recall the epsilon neighborhood theorem, it tells that if a compact set is contained in an open set, then there is an epsilon neighborhood of this compact set, okay, uh, which is contained in the in the uh, open set. Okay. So, here we have a situation where A is contained in the domain of analyticity of the function f, which is an open set omega okay. and then we can use the epsilon neighborhood theorem. Okay. So, A is a compact subset of C. Uh, so, there exists an epsilon positive such that A is contained, okay. A is contained in the union of uh, the epsilon balls, where the union is over all points contained in A okay, uh, and this is in turn contained in uh, the set under question, the open set under question uh, omega. Okay. So, now uh, what we will do is we will consider the intersection of uh, a tiling of the complex plane uh, with, uh, with the set A, this compact set A. Okay. So, uh, tiling is uh, essentially you imagine that the complex plane is divided into square tiles whose edges are parallel to the uh, x and y axis or the real and imaginary axis. Okay. So, um, so you imagine a grid. Uh, so, consider a tiling of the complex plane. Uh, by uh, squares of side okay by squares uh, whose sides are parallel to the uh, coordinate axis or the real and imaginary axis okay uh, of side okay so the squares have a side length s which is strictly less than epsilon by square root 2 we'll see why this choice is important okay so um, what you have is here is the compact set a okay schematically and then you have uh, tiled the whole of the complex plane using squares uh, whose uh, side length is s which is strictly less than epsilon over root 2. It does not matter how small s you pick okay, as long as of course, it should be positive it is the length. Okay. So, um, so, you consider such a tiling okay, and consider it is intersection uh, with a consider the intersection of this tiling with A. Okay, we are going to use the structure of this tiling uh, to prove the theorem. Okay. So, the structure is essentially there are squares okay, and then there are uh, portions of the squares when, uh, when the curve the boundary of A intersects uh, the square tile. 
okay okay so the intersection of uh, a square tile okay uh, with a it can be uh, one the whole of square tile such that square tile is okay is contained uh, in the interior of a okay the containment of the square tile in the interior of a is important the whole of the square tile could intersect a with uh, it intersecting the boundary as well so uh, so we'll uh, separate that uh, one case okay so uh, the whole of the square tile such that it's contained in the interior okay call such a tile a normal tile to okay it could be uh, a portion okay a compact portion okay, of the square tile of a square tile okay uh, whose area is strictly less than uh, the area of the square okay and call such uh, a portion of a tile uh, a special tile now um, a special tile could really be disconnected in the sense it might have uh, few portions or uh, yeah uh, okay not just uh, one compact piece okay so uh, we'll allow for that and we'll still call all those portions of, for a given uh, square tile as uh, a special tile okay but notice that the number of pieces which a can split this uh, square tile into has to be finite because we are dealing with uh, two compact sets intersection of two compact sets one is a and the other is the square tile okay so now let uh, let us denote uh, the boundary of a by do uh, a okay notice that uh, the boundary of a is nothing but gamma 1 star union gamma 2 star okay that is the uh, boundary of a okay and uh, now special tile okay uh, is possible when when uh, a square tile intersects the boundary of a okay it's only possible when uh, a square tile intersects boundary of a okay a square tile is either completely in the exterior of a or it's in the uh, interior of a or it could be that uh, it intersects the boundary of a we want to call a square tile still a normal tile when the intersection with the boundary does not take up any area of the square tile itself okay and uh, now let us orient the uh, boundaries of these tiles both normal and special okay uh, in the positive sense okay so for a normal tile it's easy you just consider the counterclockwise orientation of the boundary of the square okay but for a special tile uh, i just mentioned that the number of uh, the number of pieces or the number of components of the boundary okay could be more than one okay nevertheless each of them we will orient in the counterclockwise uh, sense okay so after having done that okay um, 
we notice that for a square tile for a normal square tile ok. Uh, let us call it capital S ok contained in A in uh, the interior of A ok. S is clearly contained of course, in omega because A itself is completely contained in omega ok. Uh, so, uh, the integration on the boundary of S oriented in the uh, counterclockwise sense of f of z dz is clearly 0 by Cauchy's theorem for a rectangle. Okay. So, uh, here uh, the, that symbol stands for boundary of S oriented in the uh, positive sense. Okay. So, uh, once the integral is 0 uh, actually the orientation does not matter but uh, we want to keep the positive orientation uh, for region reasons which will be evident shortly ok. So, the boundary of uh, on the boundary of S the, in the contour integral of f is 0 by Cauchy's theorem for a rectangle ok. And uh, for a special tile ok for a special tile ok T let us call it T. So, actually T is possibly a union of finitely many uh, uh, compact pieces ok. Then uh, for a special tile T contained in A, uh, the boundary of T uh, is a finite collection of positively oriented uh, simple closed curves ok. And if x is a point which belongs to the boundary of T intersection uh, boundary of A ok. Notice that I said that uh, uh, that a special tile is possible only when uh, a square tile intersects uh, the boundary of A ok. So, there is such a point x which is contained in the intersection of boundary of T with the boundary of A ok. Uh, uh, then um, that special tile T ok is completely contained in B x epsilon by the arrangement that uh, the side of any square tile is at most uh, epsilon by square root 2 ok. So, since S is strictly less than uh, ok since S is strictly less than epsilon by square root 2 what you have is you take x to be x to be a point in the intersection ok and then uh, this is your epsilon ball ok. So, this is your epsilon ok. So, since s is strictly less than epsilon by root 2 ok any two points contained in the square t ok have to be uh, are at most uh, square root 2 s apart ok. So, uh, they are they are at most epsilon apart ok. So, any two points uh, the distance between any two points uh, y 1 comma y 2 is at most uh, root 2 s for any two points s 1 or y 1 comma y 2 belonging to uh, a square tile. Okay. And by arrangement uh, s is strictly less than epsilon by root 2. So, this is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. So, if you consider an epsilon ball which is uh, uh, around a point which is contained in the square tile of course, your whole square is contained in that epsilon ball. Okay. So, that schematic should uh, convince you. Okay. So, uh, your T uh, is contained in this uh, B x epsilon. Okay. So, uh, as a consequence so by okay, so that by Cauchy's theorem for a disc okay, for a disc that was version 2 we uh, saw last time okay, uh, for a disc the, the integration on the uh, boundary of T oriented in the in the uh, positive sense okay, uh, of f of z dz 
is equal to 0. Actually, this integration is a possibly a finite sum of uh, few integrals, uh, which are on the uh, boundaries uh, comp component boundaries of boundary of t. Now, we consider Okay, so, whether you take a normal tile or whether you take a special tile, the integration on the boundary, the contour integration on the boundary uh, oriented in the uh, positive sense of f is equal to 0 okay, by two different versions of Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, now you consider the uh, summation of uh, the contour integral. Okay, uh, on the boundary of a tile T of f of z dz, okay, where the summation runs over all square tiles, okay, all special and normal tiles T. Okay. So, you consider the collection of all normal and special tiles these have to be finite, because um, you are considering the intersection of a compact set A with uh, these square tiles. Okay. So, there are only finitely many uh, tiles like this. Okay. So, you consider the finite sum of these integrals over the boundary of T uh, oriented in the counterclockwise sense uh, in the positive sense. Okay. And so, and then by uh, by either of above you are actually adding a bunch of zeros. Okay. So, this is 0 by, uh, by above okay, by the Cauchy's theorem version 1 and Cauchy's theorem version 1 for uh, normal tiles and Cauchy's theorem version 2 uh, for a disk for the special tiles. Okay. Now, this is uh, important. Okay. Now, this equation is important we will analyze the LHS. Okay. So, um, on LHS on the left hand side of 1, okay, let us call this 1, okay, uh, we will make the following observations. Every side of a normal tile, normal square tile okay, appears twice with opposite orientation. Okay. So, that is clear, because if you have a square tile normal square tile, which is completely contained in the interior of uh, uh, the region A. Okay. So, maybe that is the other curve gamma 2. Okay. Then there is an adjoining square, which shares uh, that side. Okay. So, if you consider one side of uh, of a normal tile, any side of the normal tile, it is completely contained in the interior of A. Okay. So, uh, so that side is common to yet another square, uh, which, uh, which could be possibly a, a special tile, but that side is shared by some other tile. So, each of these uh, sides, which are completely contained in the interior. Uh, are shared by two tiles okay and then uh, one of them will have the orientation in the in one direction okay and the other will have uh, the orientation on that side in the opposite direction okay because both these tiles are or oriented uh, in the positive sense okay so when you when you consider a side okay, of a normal square tile, okay, then that appears uh, twice in the integration, okay, one for this tile and one for the other tile. Okay. So, that is one observation and the second observation is that in the special tiles, okay, um, every side or portion of the side of the square tile appears twice again. Okay, uh, with opposite orientation.
Okay. So, if like I mentioned uh, in the earlier case in observation 1, if you have a side of a, a special tile does not matter normal or special, okay. if you have a side which is completely contained in the interior of A, then uh, the integration of F uh, occurs twice on that side with opposite orientations uh, in equation 1. Okay. So, now if you have a portion of uh, a square tile, okay. so for example, here is a square tile whose portion, okay, this is the portion I will uh, probably use a highlighter to show that portion. Okay. So, uh, only a portion of it is, uh, is present in the interior of A or uh, is present inside uh, gamma 1. Okay. Uh, and in that event that is also shared with an adjacent tile. Okay. So, uh, that portion uh, of the uh, side of the square is shared with the adjacent uh, square. Okay. So, uh, and it is exactly that portion which is shared and not more. Okay. So, uh, so, the second observation holds. Okay. And now, there is a, a, a third observation that I make. Okay. So, in special tiles, okay, uh, portions of gamma 1 appear okay, and only once with the same orientation as gamma 1 okay, of gamma 1. Okay. Not only that, okay, also every point of gamma 1 appears in okay, appears as the boundary okay, or appears in the boundary of some special tile. Okay, either of these are clear. So, in the picture I drew here, you notice that here is gamma 1 oriented in that uh, positive sense. Okay. So, that appears um, only once in a special tile, okay. because uh, I mean there is no adjoining uh, square tile containing uh, the, the boundary as gamma 1. Okay. So, here is the special tile in this example picture or in the schematic gamma 1 only appears for this one okay and then there is no other square tile sharing that portion of gamma 1 okay and also uh, since we are tiling all of the complex plane it's clear that gamma each point of gamma 1 has to appear in some uh, square tile it has to fall in some square tile okay and um, for yeah, uh, also notice that when you orient these, uh, these uh, special tiles in the positive sense, the tallies with the orientation of gamma 1. Okay. And um, there is a fourth observation that portion of uh, gamma 2 appear okay, once with opposite orientation of gamma 2. Uh, and all portions uh, or all points of uh, gamma 2 star. So, here also I as I said you know this should be gamma 1 star actually in the third observation. Okay. So, all points of gamma 2 star appear in some special tile. Okay. So, portion of gamma 2 uh, portions of gamma 2 appear uh, once with opposite orientation of gamma 2 in special tiles actually. Okay. So, if you have a tile intersecting gamma 2 which is the uh, inner curve, okay, then um, you see that here is the portion okay, hashed portion and uh, that intersects gamma 2 and when you orient the uh, special tile in the 
positive sense it picks up uh, the opposite orientation to gamma 2, gamma 2 is oriented in this sense. Okay. So, um, he, this is the fourth observation okay. and these four observations uh, lead us to uh, conclude the following. Okay. So, um, the integration uh, along sides of squares okay whether partial or full sides it does not matter the integration along sides of squares okay uh, cancel each other when the integration on the lhs uh, you know includes a portion uh, of or complete side of square uh, then it does so uh, twice with opposite orientation okay so they cancel each other Okay. And when you have these curves gamma 1 or gamma 2 or the trace of them actually appearing in the integration, the portions of gamma 1 um, are with positive orientation and the portions of gamma 2 are with negative orientation. And we also notice that um, each point of gamma 1 star and gamma 2 star participate in the integration uh, on the LHS of the equation 1. Okay. So, with these observations we see that uh, the LHS okay, um, boils down to LHS of 1 is actually equal to the integration on gamma 1 after rearrangement because portions of gamma 1 could be uh, you know here and there in the integration. Okay. So, after rearrangement uh, this is equal to uh, the integration on gamma 1 of f of z dz. Okay, plus the integration on the negative of gamma 2 f of z dz. Okay, and uh, the right hand side of course, is 0. Okay, and uh, when you have all these sides of squares the integration cancels. Okay. So, as a result we have that the, in the contour integral on uh, gamma 1 of f of z dz is equal to the contour integral on gamma 2 of f of z dz. And that is proof for the smooth version at least okay. and that completes the proof of Cauchy's theorem. Uh, we will see uh, quick applications of uh, this version of Cauchy's theorem, it is very useful. Okay. So, for example, uh, let gamma of t be a circle of radius 39 does not matter a very large radius okay, uh, centered at i okay, 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, let gamma be that simple closed curve. Okay, then find uh, the integration, the contour integration on gamma of 1 by z dz. Okay, now, if you start parameterizing uh, or uh, if you start uh, evaluating this integral by using the parameterization, it becomes very uh, complicated. Okay, so, you have uh, 0 to 2 pi this integral i, okay, let me call it i i is equal to integration from 0 to 2 pi of 1 by i plus 39 e power i t uh, times 39 i e power i t d t which is d z. Okay. So, 1 by z d z okay. and um, you see that this integral is not easy to tackle. You have 0 to 2 pi cosine t plus i sin t divided by uh, 39 cosine t plus i times 39 sin t plus 1 dt. Okay. So, it looks uh, rather uh, daunting, okay. but um, if you use the deformation theorem or the Cauchy's uh, theorem, the version we just proved, uh, you can see that here is i okay, and you take a very large circle centered at i. Okay. And if the interior contains the point 0, okay, so clearly the interior of this uh, curve gamma contains 0, okay, then uh, you look at the unit circle and we already know th by the fundamental integral that 1 by z dz on the unit circle. Okay, so, gamma 0 1, let us call it, uh, let us have a notation for unit circle, let us just call it c rather. Okay oriented in the positive sense. Okay. So, uh, we know that 
if that is the unit circle 1 by z dz on c gives us uh, 2 pi i. Okay, this we computed that is the fundamental integral. Okay. So, uh, by Cauchy's theorem uh, okay, we see that this circle acts like gamma 1 okay, and this c acts like gamma 2 and c is completely contained in the interior of gamma 1. Okay. So, by uh, the above theorem by the above version of Cauchy's theorem, okay, we immediately see that the integration on gamma 1 of 1 by z dz is equal to the integration on c okay, or actually gamma uh, integration on gamma of 1 by z dz is the same as the integration on c of 1 by z dz which is 2 pi i. Okay. So, you do not have to compute that integral. Okay. So, that is an uh, application of this. Okay. So, you could have really any complicated uh, curve which contains 0 on the interior, 0 in the interior okay, and um, as long as well and if 0 is in the interior of that simple closed curve uh, and if the simple closed curve is oriented in the positive sense, then there is a uh, ball of some radius around a 0 which is contained in the interior. Okay. So, if 0 belongs to the interior of gamma here is gamma, okay. then B 0 r is contained in the interior of gamma, because interior is an open set okay. and we know by the fundamental integral that um, C okay, 0 r 1, r 1 strictly less than r. Okay. So, it is a circle of radius r 1 around r, uh, 0 okay, of 1 by z dz is 2 pi i by the fundamental integral that we calculated. Okay. So, uh, from this we can conclude that the integration on uh, gamma which is oriented in the positive sense uh, of 1 by z dz is also uh, 2 pi i okay, by using the Cauchy's theorem which we just saw. Okay. So, this is a simple application uh, okay. and um, this version of Cauchy's theorem is very useful uh, in deriving Cauchy's integral formula okay, which we will see next time.